Let's look at final exam question number 29. In Trigonometry Demystified, second edition, please refer to page 372. The question asks us, why do we generally restrict the values of the inverse circular functions, such as the arc sine, that would be the inverse sine, or the arc cosine, to a principal branch? Well, this graph that we see here is a generic example of what will happen if we try to graph y equals the inverse sine of x, which we can write like that, or we can write arc sine with a lowercase a. That is a relation, but it's not a true function. And the reason that it's not a true function is that it fails to pass what's called the vertical line test. Now just imagine taking a vertical line that is parallel to this y-axis and sweeping it across this graph. If that vertical line ever intersects the graph at more than one point, then you know that this graph does not represent a true function. But we can make it represent a true function if we're willing to restrict its values to only a certain range of values. Here's the vertical line which you can imagine just sweeping back and forth across this red curve which represents the inverse sine relation. Well, okay, there are a number of ways we can do this. We can restrict the values. We want to restrict the values so that it passes this test, but we also want to restrict it to the least possible extent that we can get away with and still have it pass this test. And there are a lot of ways to do that, a lot of ways. But mathematicians have come up, for the sine function in particular, with this principal branch between these two points right here. Here the x value would be 1, and the y value would be pi over 2. Here the x value would be minus 1, and the y value would be minus pi over 2. Now these are radian values here. Radian values. If you want to go with degrees, that would be 90 degrees, and this would be minus 90 degrees. Now if we restrict the function to just the values between and including these two points, then it passes the vertical line test, as you can imagine, by sweeping that green line back and forth. But we can't include any more points than that above here or below there without creating a conflict somewhere. In order to make sure that this graph represents a true function and not just a relation, we need to make that restriction that is choice B. We make that restriction to make sure that the inverse trigonometric functions actually behave as true functions. And once we get true functions for them, then we capitalize these initial letters. That indicates that we have a function. In this case, the inverse sine, and the blue part represents the principal branch. Again, the red curve would represent the entire inverse sine relation. But again, we can review this uh, on pages 90, roughly pages 93 through 97, and I explain the vertical line test in a little box on page 97. And I recommend that you read that.
it is a still struggling box on page 97. Again, B is the answer. 